The Catholic Church Speaks. So I start off by first of all appreciating all of us who are here, our seminarians, our bishops who are present, the formators who are here, and all those who came for the launch of Misale Akiroma and the other books. So our, we've been having a meeting since Tuesday, and this is why we needed to make a statement, having been here as a conference, the normal November uh, uh, conference of bishops. So our theme today is a call to keep faith alive and trust in God. And I quote Isaiah 40, 31 which states, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. End quote. We, the Catholic bishops of Kenya, having been meeting in Donum Day, Sisters Santa and Karen, Nairobi, convey our heartfelt greetings to all Kenyans in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. As our, your shepherds, we thank you today for the new Misale Yakiroma, which we have launched today during the celebration of the Holy Mass at St. Thomas Aquinas Seminary. With this launch, we ask all members of our clergy, religious men and women, and our lay faithful to officially start using the new Misale Yakiroma on the first Sunday of Advent in the coming liturgical year. We take this opportunity to express our gratitude to all who contributed to the preparation of this new liturgical book. During our week-long meeting, we have reflected deeply on the state of our nation, particularly on the prevailing drought situation in the country, the COVID-19 pandemic, unrest in schools, and the national political, political discourse, among others. We therefore wish to state the following about drought and situation of our country, the country drought situation affecting nearly all countries, all, count, all counties is in the read, in the arid and semi-arid areas of our country is a, a matter of great concern. It calls for urgent and decisive action from all as your shepherds, we appeal to all the faithful within our parishes and all people of goodwill to express solidarity with our affected brothers and sisters by donating food and giving other, other, each other assistance. For example, facilitating in transportation of the same donations to other parts. Throughout our dioceses, Ways and means should be found to make sure that such donations reach those affected by drought. No Kenyan should die of famine. We also note with concern that there are, has been very slow response to the drought situation. Consequently, we appeal to the government to respond in swift and coordinate uh, in a manner to which a situation by providing both short-term and long-term assistance and solutions to the affected populations to lessen suffering and avert humanitarian crisis. It is unfortunate that 58 years down the line after independence, we are unable to come up with permanent solutions to the perennial droughts 
that affect our country every year. As a country, we must win ourselves from obsession with politics and sensations of the expense, at the expense of important issues of national concern. It cannot be business as usual when Kenyans continue to starve, even die from drought, which can easily be managed through establishment of sound mitigation structures. The second concern we have is our commitment to the environment conservation. As Kenyans, we are blessed with great land endowed with diverse natural resources. As Pope Francis in his encyclical letter Laudato Si reminds us, these resources are parts of God's blessings and our inheritance to pass on to the future generations. It is becoming clearer that frequent droughts that we are experiencing in many of our parts in the country are as a result of global climate change and environmental degradation. Here in Kenya, it seems our model of development has led to a culture of unsustainable degradation of our environment and depletion of our natural resources. As the Catholic Church, we have been engaged in an environmental campaign to raise awareness among Kenyans on the need to conserve our environment. The campaign promotes the work of God through supporting initiatives that create safe environment for every human person to enjoy. We are inviting all to plant as many trees as possible in order to conserve the environment. We also call on the government to help the people access affordable alternative energy, what we may consider to be green energy, in order to reduce the use of charcoal consumption in our country. We are pleased to note that the government of Kenya, through the Ministry of Environment and Forestry, has embarked on a similar campaign. As a church, we want to join this campaign in partnership with the government. We appeal to the country, to the county governments, and especially as they uh, gather on the 7th of this month, uh, next month, annual devolution conference, to seriously take up with this campaign and partner with faith-based organizations and our dioceses for maximum positive impact. We also invite all Kenyans to embrace the environmental conservation and take advantage of the current short rains where the rains have already started to plant trees. If we all act to conserve environment, the current effect of climate change that we are witnessing today in the form of perennial droughts, floods, and insecurity, waterborne diseases, and respiratory infections will be reduced to manageable levels. We have a concern about the third one, which is about arson and unrest in our schools. We are witnessing an escalation of arson and unrest in our schools and other disruptive behavior by students resulting in injury and loss of property as well as learning time. The continued disruption of learning in our schools through the students' unrest is worrying, a matter that should be a great concern for us all. Having analyzed many of the issues related to the unrest to our schools, we note that among us the many identified possible causes of this unrest are rising in discipline caused by drug abuse, peer pressure, 
coupled by stresses exerted on learners uh, by over compressed and erratic academic calendar. Moreover, we note that current over congestion in uh, the dormitories, classrooms, and dining halls in schools, which many times results in appalling conditions, has greatly constrained the learners. We therefore advise the following. We appeal first to the students not to destroy their schools, but raise their concerns in a constructive manner. Let our children know that we love them and care for them, and that education is a key to, is a key to their future. On the same note, we ask all stakeholders to listen to the students and pupils and seek address to address their challenges. Number two, we need to review ways of maintaining discipline in our schools through deliberate coordinated efforts of correction, mentorship, counseling, and effect, effective chaplain's ministry. Especially the parents also should be more involved in this process. The boards of management of our schools and institutions and principals, as well as of schools, should be empowered and supported to deal with extreme indiscipline cases in our schools. Number, five, number four, we need to make deliberate and conscious, conspicuous and conscious and effective effort to effectively eliminate access of alcohol and drugs in our schools. Number five, we, besides the discipline, we need to address the issue of cultism and radicalization in schools, as well as challenges related to mental health. Number six, we call for reinstatement of extracurriculum activities in schools. We talk about sports and other activities that relax their students. The Minister of Education, number, number, number seven, the teachers of service commission and all stakeholders, including the churches who sponsor many schools, should have a regular consultative forum to address emerging issues. The role of sponsor number eight, we say, is a be reaffirmed and enhanced. We reiterate that the role of the sponsor includes oh, the instilling of good values and morals, enhancing conduct a conducive learning environment in schools. This includes addressing individual and common problems affecting learners, appropriate program for counseling and spiritual support. We believe this is critical for institutions of learning. The Catholic Church Speaks Number four, implementation of competency-based curriculum. As your shepherds, we have been following with keen interest the process of implementation of the competency-based curriculum. While we acknowledge that the competency-based curriculum has some benefits for learners, parents, schools, and other stakeholders, for it to be implemented successfully, it is necessary that one, the government and other stakeholders should give more capacity and strategic support to the teachers and parents. Two, more financial and logistical resources be allocated to all schools. Three, pupil-teacher ratio be adequate for effective learning. Four, particular attention and greater capacity 
be given to special needs schools by the government. Five, strategic sensitization be given to parents in order to understand their roles in the delivery of the competency-based curriculum. Six, the Ministry of Education, the Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development, and the Teacher Service Commission closely collaborate and build synergy for quality assurance. Number five, our position on introduction of comprehensive sexual education. Last year, the Senate rejected a private member's bill dubbed the Reproductive Health Bill, sponsored by Honorable Susan Keheka, Senator Nakuru County. At the time, the bill had generated a lot of criticism and resistance from Kenyans. We are deeply concerned that a similar bill has recently been introduced at the East African Legislative Assembly by Honorable Kennedy Mukulia Ayason, dubbed Sexual and Reproductive Health Bill. In our view, this bill that is before the East African Legislative Assembly is a reintroduction of the rejected Kehika Bill at the regional level. We note that this bill has been presented before the East African Legislative Assembly and was rejected on 12 February 2021. This followed the numerous concerns raised by various stakeholders. Having studied the bill, it is evident that the motive behind the bill is to force the East African community to sexualize our children and introduce them to the agenda of abortion, contraceptives, gender transition and reassignment, homosexuality, lesbianism, which go against our religious and cultural values, as well as natural law. Guided by Article 26 of the Constitution of Kenya 2010, we maintain that the bill as presented is an attempt to engender an amorphous field of rights referred to as reproductive rights, which are contrary to the right of life as protected and guaranteed by the same constitution. As the Kenya Conference of Catholic Bishops, we dissociate ourselves from this process and do not support the bill whatsoever. We have already written to the East African Legislative Assembly raising our objections to the bill. We call on the government of Kenya not to endorse this bill at the regional level, considering that the Senate rejected it. We therefore urge the East African Legislative Assembly to reject this bill in total. Six, political campaigns and peaceful elections. We are concerned over the heightened political activities in the country as we approach the 2022 general election. It is unfortunate that our leaders have abandoned delivery of services to the people and moved into full-time campaigns well ahead of the legally stipulated campaign period. Further to this, it is regrettable to know that based on the experience of the voter registration exercise, the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission embarked on, we noticed some electoral malpractices. In some parts of the country, it was evident that some voters were transported to register in stations away from their places of residence. These are early signs of rigging and manipulation of the forthcoming general elections. Moreover, according to the results of the voter registration exercise, voter apathy is rampant among Kenyans. This is a dangerous trend against the gains we, have, we as a nation have made in our struggle for a truly democratic society. We therefore urge all Kenyans who are of the age of 18 and above to exercise their democratic right by ensuring that they vote for leaders of their choice. 
Although the mass registration exercise has been closed, we encourage Kenan, Kenyans who have not registered to make an effort and register as voters in their local e IEBC offices. We remind every Kenyan that not to vote is choosing to participate in the election of wrong leaders. We are also concerned that despite the prevailing COVID-19 pandemic, leaders are drawing huge crowds to their rallies where the Ministry of Health protocols are completely ignored. We warn that we risk sliding back to a serious infection crisis if this recklessness is not contained. We have repeatedly called for a peaceful electioneering process which, culminated, which culminates in just and peaceful elections. We remind leaders that if they continue to promote ethnic mobilization and balkanization, they risk exposing our country to grave danger. Leaders must therefore tone down the rhetoric and conduct themselves with civility and decorum. The Catholic Church speaks. Number seven, the legal regime governing elections. We would like once again to reiterate our repeated call to Parliament to enact necessary reforms in our electoral laws to ensure free, fair, and credible elections in August 2022. Going into the next general elections without these critical reforms is a recipe for trouble. Furthermore, it is critical to fill with urgency all vacant positions in the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, particularly that of the Chief Executive Officer. Parliament should also ensure that the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission is allocated all the necessary resources required to conduct civic education and manage a smooth electoral process. On its part, the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission must ensure that all the allocated resources are used in a prudent and accountable manner. Number eight, the COVID-19 situation. Since the lifting of some of the COVID-19 restrictions, including lifting of the night curfew, the country is gradually returning to normalcy. We, we, however, caution Kenyans that we are not yet out of the woods. COVID-19 is still very much with us, and the risk of infection remains high. We, therefore, must continue to adhere to the Ministry of Health protocols on COVID-19 to avoid sliding back and losing all the gains we have collectively achieved in combating the spread of the virus. We, however, caution against unreasonable demands by the government that may infringe on people's rights, such as the requirement to produce vaccination certificates in order to be offered services. We also hope that very soon restrictions will be relaxed in places of worship. We remind Kenyans that as we enter the electioneering period, there is need to exercise extra caution to reduce the risk of contracting COVID-19 from political gatherings. Everybody must take his or her personal safety seriously by wearing face masks and observing social distance when attending public events. In conclusion, dear Kenyans,
despite the many challenges we are facing in our lives today, let us keep our hope alive. Let us learn to trust in God, everything, and He, he will never abandon us. We invite you to continue praying for the end of this COVID-19 pandemic and prevailing drought situation in our country. We pray for peaceful electioneering period in the lead up to 2022 general elections. Let us all be inspired to action by the words of the scriptures Chronicle 2, verse, uh, chapter 7, verse 14, which reads, where the word of God, uh, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, they will hear my, uh, they will fear, I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and I will heal their land. End of quote. We therefore invoke now the blessings of God upon all Kenyans, and pray that God will see us through our tribulations and will fill our hearts with hope and wavering trust in him. May the Almighty God prepare us well and the journey with us towards just and peaceful election in the year 2022, and may plenty be found in our borders. God bless Kenya. God bless you all. Thanks be to God. And once again, thank you for listening. Thank you for working with us. Thank you for working with each other. Let's support our, each, one another in our challenges and difficulties. The Catholic Church Speaks.